Well, they're often at the end of a journey. Lighthouses are all along the coast of North and South Carolina. And for many, seeing these lighthouses is like stepping back in time. And while many are now run by the government, there's only one left in North Carolina that's run like it was back in the 1800s. Carolina's own Queen City News reporter Maureen Wirtz tonight introduces us to the last of the lightkeepers. Anytime I'm out at night, I know exactly what 17 seconds of darkness feels like now. On the edge of nowhere, it's often the only warning between a sailor and a shipwreck. Without, gosh, you have when you're like, I can't see a thing, it's immediately frightening. Without it, uncertainty, but with it, relief, because there are those whose job it is to keep the light on. If you had this job, you would not quit it either, right? <laughs> For the last 17 years, Megan Agresto has been one of the light keepers living and working at the Currituck Beach Lighthouse. Raising her two sons here, her family is the last in North Carolina to call a lighthouse home. It's just an incredible feeling to be like, okay, that lighthouse is in the exact same spot and those stars are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And it's just, it's just so beautiful. So yes, I do have that feeling like, I've had it since the beginning, like, you're gonna let me do this? The light keepers left the lighthouse in the late 1930s, losing their job to innovation and electricity. The government taking over care of the lighthouses, and for decades, the Currituck Beach Lighthouse crumbled until 1980, when a group of locals decided this lighthouse was worth saving. You just have a sense of place here that people feel immediately walking outside. Restoring and rebuilding, they brought back the old lighthouse and the job of the lightkeeper. Yeah, I do. We can do it. We can make it last. While she doesn't have to worry about keeping the oil burning, making sure a 147-year-old building stays standing requires a lot of work and effort in an unceasing battle against weather, water, and time. So we want this lighthouse to be here and not underwater and shining for 1,500 years. That's my goal. From the tens of thousands of bricks. 220 up, 220 down, yeah. To the one-of-a-kind walkway that surrounds it. After all these years, Megan still finds a way to see everything in a whole new light. Like I've climbed it 3,000 times for sure. It never gets boring because it's always different. The weather is different, the wind is different, the temperature is different, the ocean is different. After almost two decades, Megan still remembers the first time she really looked up. Once they both slept through the night and I walked outside, I was like, how have I missed this? This whole, like, the stars are your original aids to navigation. How have I missed them? And now I try to be out almost every night, just a little bit. Megan's kids won't likely take over her job. I don't think so. That's not how things work anymore. And when she's done, she doesn't know if there will ever be another family to live at the Currituck Beach Lighthouse. But it's not necessarily meant to be the story of Megan Louise. It's meant to be the story of the Currituck Beach Lighthouse, and we just bump into it a little bit. The lighthouse, a consistent beacon among constant change. Because no matter what, the light will always be on, even if she is the last of the light keepers. With photojournalist Jenna Kurtz, Maureen Wirtz, Queen City News. Just a, view, a beautiful view, beautiful story Yeah, a lot there. of pride in being a yes, lightkeeper, too. Absolutely. Isn't well, the Currituck Beach Lighthouse is run by a nonprofit. Yeah, and it's also $10 to climb all 220 stairs if you want to do that, too. And all that money goes to keeping the lighthouse running, so it looks like a good workout.